Hello everybody, my name is Sean Harris and today I will be showing you how to make an external microphone mount for your camcorder that still allows you to use your tripod. Now this is a solution to a problem that I've had for quite a while with my camcorder. I have an external shotgun microphone and nowhere to mount it. The only place I could figure out was underneath the camera which then didn't allow me to use my tripod. So I came up with this design and this build to solve this problem. Hopefully you find it useful. Okay, so these are the materials I'm going to use to build my accessory mount for my camera. This is a piece of half inch thick pine board. Uh, I've already put templates on here for where the screw is going to go to, uh, that will screw into the camera as well as a little locator peg that will help stop the camera from rotating around and also the uh, shoe mount base which is going to be here which I'm going to dremel down into the wood to make it fit nice and snug and I chose pine because it's extremely lightweight so it's not going to add any massive bulk to the camera now for the hardware I have some quarter by 20 bolts. Uh, these are only an inch long, I, I can cut these down to the sizes I need. I have some square nuts that uh, are the same thread size. I chose square because I can dremel into the piece of wood a square and these will fit very snugly and will stop them from moving around. And I also have some wing nuts but I'm going to glue onto the ends of the threads so we can screw and unscrew the camera and the accessory mount without needing a socket or or anything or a pair of pliers to undo the hex head. So this is the hardware and I'm going to use all of this didn't cost much, it only cost me less than ten dollars at a hardware store. So I'm going to go ahead and start assembling. Okay, so I just finished cutting the piece of pine wood into the shape of my mount. As you can see, my cuts aren't very straight at all, they're extremely crooked. Now, it's not very difficult to cut wood, but I mostly work on metal, so wood is very foreign to me. So this is just down to an experience. And as you can see, right at the very end, this is snapped straight out of the way. As you can see here, there's no cut marks right along here at this very end. That's just due to pine being extremely soft wood, which uh, makes it very lightweight, which is why I chose this material in the first place. So now I'm going to go get a file. I'm going to round these outside edges here and here to make it really nice and smooth. And i uh, also going to file these edges here to make them straight and appear to be, uh, appear to be more finished, is what I'm aiming for here. So I will get back to you after I finish that.
Okay, so I've just finished filing down the edges of my microphone mount. As you can see, they look a lot straighter, they're a lot neater. They still need some touching up, but I'm going to go back to that later and finish that up and round the edges and such. But what I'm going to work on right now is dremeling out the recess locator for the shoe mounts for whatever accessories you plan to put on this mount. For me, it's a microphone holder, which I have right here. I transferred the pattern of this by colouring in the bottom of the mount with a sharpie or you can use paint or anything else that you have then placing it where you need very quickly after applying the ink or paint and pushing down really hard and that would leave a nice template on your part. Now the tool that I'm going to be using for this is just a very basic Dremel. Uh, on this Dremel I have, you can't see, see it very well but it's a, uh, a grinding head for wood. You come at a vertical angle like so and you can grind your pattern in here. Okay, so I just finished dremeling out the recess for the shoe mount. It didn't come out as smooth as I'd have hoped. I kind of went over the edge a little bit. Uh, and I've still got some touching up to do as this doesn't quite fit in yet. So I need to go back and continue dremeling some more. Okay, so I've just finished dremeling out some more of this. Of course, it doesn't look very good because I went way over the lines and kind of lost control of the Dremel at one point. So it's not exactly perfect shaped. But I can fit the shoe mount in here and it's kind of secure. There's still ink rubbing off on the inside as you can see here. And along here. So I may try and use that to uh, deepen the recess just a little bit more to try and uh, get the shape a little bit better. Okay, so I just did a little bit more drumming and now this fits very snug and it stays in there pretty well by itself. So I'd say I did a good job there in order to make that fit. So now I just need to drill the locator hole for the screw to go in the bottom. Okay, for, so the next part that I'm going to do to finish up the recess locator for my microphone mount is I'm going to cut the head off of this quarter by 20 bolt, thread it into the bottom here, and then use this in order to find where I need to drill into the mount to put this bolt through. And for that I'm also going to use the Dremel, but instead of using a routing tool, I'm going to use a cutoff wheel. Now this spins at a very high rate of speed, and it can cut through metal very easily as well as cut through yourself very easily so if you're following along with this at home do be very careful I'm turning the speed up to approximately 20,000 rpm and we shall see what happens Alright, so now the top of that is cut off, that's going to be extremely hot, as well as the bolt head. So I'm going to sit and let this cool for a couple of minutes. Now that this is cooled off a little bit, I'm going to go in with a file and just flatten the head of this. So we'll be able to screw into place with ease. As well as get rid of the sharp leftovers on the top. Okay. 
Okay, so after cutting the head of the bolt off and filing it down smooth, this can now screw into the bottom of my shoe mount, like so. Now I can use this as a template to drill a hole through the bottom of my mount in order to locate this later on. Okay, so I'm going to find the location of the bolt hole in here uh, to secure this shoe mount down by placing the shoe mount into my microphone mount and then marking the edges of the square base onto the mount like so leaving me with a rough center point in between. Now if I mark both sides of these I can do an X and find the center. Okay, so I've determined that this point here is the center of the shoe mount base, so I'm now going to drill this out and then test fit it with my shoe mount and the threaded piece installed and see how it works. Okay, so for this hole here, before I drill it out with a quarter inch wide drill bit, I'm first going to create a pilot hole using my Dremel and the Dremel cutting tool, so that way the wood doesn't crack when I Draw through it with the drill bit. But I have this, should be able to drill through here with ease. There we go, perfect. I'll just clean that hole up a little bit. I'm going to take my threaded piece, screw it in all the way, and test fit. Don't let it slip out of the vise, and that fits perfectly, and there's barely any wobble in this, and to be honest, most of that wobble is resulting from this hinge right here. Okay, so the next job for me to do is to dremel out a little recess in here for this nut to sit in. And basically this nut is here to stop this piece of thread from falling out of my microphone mount whenever I undo my accessory. So I'm gonna sit this in here, align the center holes, mark it with a pen and then dremel it out. Okay, so I just finished dremeling out the recess for the securing nut. I've got it almost completely flush with the bottom of this larger recess that I made for the bottom of the shoe mount, which is okay because the bottom of the shoe mount doesn't fit completely flush against the bottom anyway. It's actually raised up a little bit because of how badly I dremeled it. But I'm going to secure this nut in place later with some super glue or something, and that'll just stop this nut from falling out if I take the thread completely out later on and hopefully it will also stop it from spinning around later in the future. So this has been quite a success, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the other locations that need these nuts in now, so I will see you there. Okay, so I'm going to do exactly the same as what I did before in the recess for the shoe mount. I'm going to pilot hole this with the small Dremel drilling bit and then open it up later with the quarter inch wide drill bit then I'm going to mark out the square for the retaining nut and then dremel that out so it will sit completely flush with the surface.
Okay, so now I've made this recession, this nut fits completely flush with the surrounding wood and I will glue one of these in place also. Okay, so I'm now going to super glue the retaining nut in. I'm just going to put some super glue around the edge here, a little bit up the sides, just like that. Plus I'll try putting some super glue on the nut itself. have to be careful and not glue the thread into the nut. If I do that, I'll never be able to get it out and that would be bad. Now I'm going to fill in the crack on the outside with some more super glue. Probably epoxy would have worked really well, but I have none of that with me. It would have been something I should have fought through earlier, but alas, I didn't. I'm just quickly assemble another bolt here. Just gonna dump some super glue in here, like so. Snap that in there, and just fill the outside with some more glue. see how this dries. Okay, so after letting this dry for a little bit, remove this. This became quite stiff. I'm sure a little bit of glue got stuck in there. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of glue got in there, but that's fine. It came out, so that's good. That means this nut should be in there quite securely now. The only one I'm worried about is this one right here has oops now the super glue all over my camera. Fantastic. Okay, so after successfully removing the first nut, I'm gonna have to try and remove this nut, which I unfortunately stuck in there at the moment. I suspect that a little bit of super glue may have also got in there and is now giving me a little bit of trouble, so find the advice. This in upside down and try and remove this. Okay, I've just got some more grips here. Just gonna very gently break this around. Oh, I've got it loose, so that's good. It's not hand loose yet, but it's getting there. I will of course clean all of these threads up before I reuse any of these. Yeah, I can just see once this focuses, there is some super glue in these threads. So be careful. If you have a super glue around things like this, they will get jammed up. Yeah, and now I just got more super glue all over my hands. Super glue is not a good idea. It works, but it's just very messy. Should have worn gloves. That would have been a good idea. Okay, so on to the next step. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to glue one of these wing nut heads onto my cutoff thread here. I'm going to glue it into a position like this to create a wing nutted bolt. And I'll be able to use these bolts on. Uh, this side of my mount in order to be able to easily fasten and unfasten whatever accessory I choose to put on here. So I've already cleaned the threads off from when I removed this from the mount earlier. And now I'm going to add just a little bit of super glue. Once I can get the lid off, there we go and just dab a little bit in the thread like that. I'm going to take this and very gently put it back on. Pull the thread up all the way. Now I'm going to leave this right here to dry and set. 
Okay, so while the glue is still setting, as it's still a little bit tacky and gets all over your hands, I'm just going to do a little bit cleaning up on the underside here. I just have a very simple deburring tool slash countersink tool. What I'm going to do is just clean up these bottom drill holes right here into something a little bit cleaner and something a little bit more functional. Clean that out. Just use that to get the debris out of the hole. And the same on this side. There. That just cleans up the holes nicely and therefore will allow the bolts to go through a little easier. Okay, so on the bottom of the area where the camera is going to mount, I need to dremel out a recess in order to fit this bolt head in. I was originally going to use a wing nut bolt just like this, but unfortunately the wing nuts are too tall for the side profile of the piece of wood. So I'm going to have to change plans and use this to screw the camera to the mount and I need to dremel this down so it sits flush with the bottom so I can still mount this to the tripod mount. So yeah, I have my dremel back with the wood routing head. I need to take the speed up to 25,000 RPM and then I'm going to just dremel out a little area and hopefully this goes well. And now on to the last major modification to this mount. I need to drill out a recess for one more of these bolts in order for the tripod mount to screw into this microphone mount. Now I just need to dremel this in uh, and then glue it and that should be it for this other than just finishing up the rough edges, making sure the bolts are glued down correctly and then doing final touches such as rounding the edges and painting this. So I'm going to go ahead and dremel this out, glue this in place and then I will see about a test fit. So I can just get my adhesive again, slash super glue, or not so super glue as it, as it has been behaving. Just fill the bottom of that in, and wait up to where you want. Do it that way. Let's go place this in like this. And of course, it's always the last hole that you drill, but it's always one of your neatest ones. Which is highly, highly annoying, as I wish all of the other ones would have turned out as nice as this. It's actually square, so I'm really surprised with myself. So I'm going to let this sit and dry. Okay, so while this was drying off camera, I took a file and I beveled every single edge and rounded off the corners. This not only makes the mount have a finished look, but it also softens up the edges. It feels a lot nicer to hold and you could be less likely to get a splinter or anything like that off of it. I also widened up the hole on the bottom here where the hex headed bolt goes. I just widened it up to one, make it look a little bit more round as it was very sloppy and two, it makes it a little bit easier to get the socket in if you have different 
width sockets that are the same size of course but if one you know if one is really wide you can now get it in here as opposed to just relying on a skinny socket so now that this is done I'm going to paint it I've decided to use Plasti Dip because it's quick drying it's very easy to reapply and it requires literally no preparation to put it on plus it's liquid rubber so it gives it a really nice texture and it makes it a lot easier to hold plus it doesn't stain or anything like that so you haven't got to worry about the paint colouring anything that it rubs up against so I'm going to go ahead and paint this with Plasti Dip and I will be right back after applying two layers of Plasti Dip to my mount here is the finished product underneath I've already inserted the two um, bolts that hold the camera and the microphone in place oops I'll just drop it uh, here I've also added a washer to help make turning this hex bolt a lot easier and yeah I'd say it's come out rather well I'm now about to assemble everything to it and see what it looks like it's definitely come out better than I was expecting not as well as I'd hoped but better than I was expecting so that's good so I'm now going to attach everything to this and we shall see how it works okay so everything is fully assembled and as we can see it looks pretty good once this is all together it looks very very nice over here we have the microphone that's my Audio Technica shotgun mic right here is the tripod mount and obviously the camera with the screen in the middle so this has actually worked rather well I'm really pleased